I'm going to do a DNA extraction from a buccal swab using a Kyogen blood and tissue kit. This is a kit that is designed for DNA extraction and can be modified for extracting DNA from different types of tissue. The first thing I'm going to do is get a microcentrifuge tube. These may be called Eppendorf tubes occasionally, but it's just good to be aware that Eppendorf is a brand, not the actual object. You'll also notice that I tipped the tubes from the beaker into my hand rather than putting my hand in the beaker. I did this because I can't guarantee that my gloves are legitimately clean, so I don't want my glove in the beaker potentially contaminating these tubes which I want to be sterile for future work. I'm going to show you two different ways of preparing a buccal sample, even though we're really only going to be doing one for class. The next thing I'm going to do is collect my DNA sample using a cotton swab. There's a end with cotton on it that I don't want to touch, so I'm going to just rip. Open, and gently remove one swab. Rub this against the inner lining of my cheek, making sure that I rotate it as I go. I'm going to move it around slightly, trying to pick up as many of the cells from the inner lining of my cheek as I possibly can. And if I had recently eaten, I would uh, rinse my mouth out with water first to ensure that I was picking up cells from my cheek, not cells from my breakfast. Okay, I have two options now for how I could transfer this swab into my microcentrifuge tube. The first option is to put the cotton tip directly into my microcentrifuge tube and then break off the stick and close the lid. So this option is quite good because it reduces the amount of time that I'm handling the specimen and I'm going to try and mix liquids through the cotton, but the cotton has a piece of wood on the inside. I feel that I get reduced mixing by using this option and if I was doing many, many samples, this is the option I would start with for the sake of efficiency, I'm not sure that it's the most effective in terms of optimal DNA extraction. So I'm actually just going to throw that one out. I just wanted to show it to you because you may see it being used in the future. I'm going to take a second sample. This time I'm going to take a clean petri dish to use as a work surface. I can now place my swab down and I have a pair of scissors which I sterilized in advance. I'm going to cut it into the petri dish, cut the uh, lowest approximately one quarter from the tip of the cotton swab so everything below where the wood finishes. Try and get the uh, the sides as well because there'll be cells there as well. So I now have little bits of cotton in a petri dish. To do that I'm just going to use my scissors and just transfer them in. It's going to be easier to mix later on when I have to work with this sample. I now have a rack with my sample and each of my reagents prepared and I'm going to follow the recommendations of the manufacturer. First I need to add 180 microliters of ATL to my specimen. To do that I'm going to use the yellow pipette which can measure between 20 and 200 microliters. To set it to 180 microliters, in this case for this brand of pipette that means setting it to 180. So I've got my ATL into my tube, gently lift up my thumb and pull all the way out. You can see I've got no bubbles in the liquid. You can see the liquid also stops before the white filter begins. Put this into my sample now. So the next thing I need to do is add some proteinase K. Proteinase K is an enzyme. We know that automatically because it ends with A's. And we know it's an enzyme that dissolves protein because it's a protein A's. So protein enzyme. I'm going to use my yellow pipette again, this time setting it to 20 microliters into my reaction. And then so. put the tip into my sample. So I now have 200 microliters of fluid in my tube. These now need to be mixed, so I'm going to take these over to the vortex. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is incubate this at 56 degrees for 20 minutes. So our 20 minutes are up, so I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to vortex it for 15 seconds. The idea here is to get the liquids moving around a lot, make sure that the, any uh, cellular debris that's in the solution is well mixed. Now that that's well mixed, we're going to centrifuge this at 8,000 RPM for one minute. When we centrifuge a tissue sample, we'd expect to see all the solid material to be forced to the bottom. That quite often doesn't happen with a cotton sample. We quite often see very little difference, but I like to centrifuge it in the hope that it encourages some of the cells that might be in cotton to maybe move out into the liquid. What to do is get my liquid from this tube into a new microcentrifuge tube. I'm going to transfer the liquid from my sample into a new tube. Then I'm using the yellow pipette set to 200 microliters. I'm 
Now you can see there are some bubbles, there's some air in there. This is because whilst there was 200 microliters of fluid in there, there's now something obstructing the ability to get up. There is some cotton that may get in the way. There's going to be um, some liquid absorbed by the cotton itself. So there's not going to be 200 microliters of liquid readily available in the tube. I can go back in and I like to push down with the pipette tip on that cotton and just try and squeeze a bit more of the fluid out if I can. You'll notice I'm doing this quite slowly. It's because the liquid moves slowly coming back out of the cotton. That looks like about 200 microliters to me. There may still be some liquid in here, but it will be very cool to get it out. And that's enough to get on with. So, so my next step is to add buffer AL. We want 200 microliters of that. So I'm going to set my pipette to 200. You can see no bubbles, liquid is not touching the filter. I need to add 200 microliters of ethanol, which I have in this slightly larger tube. My next step is to transfer this into a spin column. My spin column has two parts. It has the spin column and the collection tube. To use my blue pipette, approximately 400 microliters of fluid that we've got in this tube. And just transfer it over. Now I can dispose of my micro centrifuge. I'm now going to centrifuge my spin column. The force of the centrifuge will encourage the liquid in the top half to pass through the white filter and into the bottom. Now that this has been through the centrifuge, take a new spin column and very carefully separate the top and the bottom and put the top into a new bottom throughout the Now we need to wash the filter, so we're going to wash away some of the additional materials that are in our sample that we are not interested in. To set my blue pipette to 500 microliters, open up the top of my spin column, use 500 microliters of buffer AW1. Again, centrifuge this for one minute at 8,000 RPM. This is my sample out of the centrifuge. And you can see that they've had about 500 microliters of liquid has flowed through the filter. And I'm going to get a new collection tube from the bag. As with the micro centrifuge tubes, I'm going to tip into my hand rather than put my hand into the bag. We're just going to separate the top and the bottom. Sometimes they suction together and you need to give it a bit of a twist. So top into new bottom, old bottom in the trash. We're going to do a second wash. The first wash got rid of a range of cellular debris and um, our first couple of reagents. The second wash gets rid of the first wash. 500 microliters, this time of AW2. This time I'm going to centrifuge my spin column for three minutes at a much higher speed. Now we have centrifuged our tube for three minutes at maximum speed, in this case 14,000 RPM. I need to discard my tube. The protocol recommended by the manufacturer is to now place the spin column into a micro centrifuge tube. I'm going to show you why that's a problem. I now have two lids. This extra lid can now become contaminated because it can't be closed quickly and it can also come become damaged in the centrifuge. So the hinge may rip and sometimes this will come off entirely and you will get damage of your lids throughout the centrifuge. So I don't like this choice. Instead, I recommend taking a second collection tube and putting the spin column into a collection tube instead. I'm using a yellow pipette set to 200 microliters. I'm going to prepare 200 microliters of buffer AE into my spin column. And now I'm going to let this incubate at room temperature for one minute. The idea here is that I want the AE buffer to have a lot of time in contact with the filter so that it can change the pH and have more of my DNA release into the fluid. You may find that some liquid will automatically flow through without first having to be centrifuged. So sometimes it will look as if there is very little liquid in your spin column.
one, but don't worry about it. If I wanted to have a higher concentration of DNA in my final product, I could use less than 200 microliters of AE. The amount of DNA total won't change, but by reducing the amount of liquid that that DNA is in, I can increase the concentration. So if we were concerned that there was very little DNA in our sample, we might choose to make that change to the final elution volume. But in this case, there's no reason to assume that a buccal swab would have low amounts of DNA, so we're going to stick with the 200 microliters recommended by the manufacturer. And now we're going to give this a centrifuge at 8,000 RPM for one minute. Having made the decision to do my final step of centrifuging into a collection tube instead of a microcentrifuge as recommended by the manufacturer, I now have my sample in a tube that doesn't have a lid, so I need to transfer it from the collection tube into a microcentrifuge tube. I'm going to use my yellow pipette again, set to 200 microliters. This time, I'm going to throw away the top, keep the bottom, and I'm going to very carefully pet up my DNA and into the new tube. I want to make sure that I get every single bit of DNA I can, so I may decide to go back and make sure I haven't left any drops behind. And there we have it, 200 microliters of my DNA taken from a buccal swab.